Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at the immune response in relation to organ transplants. We're going to talk about what the immune response is, what antigens are, the antigen-antibody complex, uh, talk a bit about organ transplants and why immunosuppressants are necessary. So firstly, immune response. So immune response consists of two parts, the innate immune response and the acquired immune response. These are the second and third lines of defense, if you've been following along. And this is the way that the body fights against any foreign material. And part of the way that they do this is through the production of antibodies. And antibodies are proteins that fight the infection. The things that cause these antibodies to be produced are called antigens or antibody generators. And that could be anything foreign in the body that causes these antibodies to be produced. So it follows that most pathogens, uh, microorganisms that cause disease, are antigens, something that elicits an immune response in the body. However, there are some things that aren't pathogens that can also be treated as antigens in the body. So, for example, pollen for those people who have hay fever. And in some diseases uh, where the immune system isn't working properly and starts attacking the body's own cells. In that case, those body's cells can also act as antigens in that situation. How antibodies work is that they bind to the antigen and in particular they bind to these marker proteins that are on the surface of antigens producing a antigen antibody complex. And this antigen antibody complex disables this active site and marks the antigen for destruction. And this might happen later on through a macrophage or something like that. As well as the antigens having markers on the outside of them that antibodies can form the complex with, all of the cells in your body also have these protein markers on the outside of them. Uh, now, antibodies are specifically targeted for a specific antigen. So you've got many, many different types of antibodies that can be produced by your body. Uh, and your body is not going to produce the antibodies that attack the protein markers on your body cells. Uh, so you can see here we've got an antigen and we've got the antibodies being produced that fit in with this to create a complex. However, we've got a body cell and the antibodies do not fit in with this body cell because they are specifically targeted for the antigen. So that's what usually happens within your body. If you have an organ transplant, you have a whole bunch of cells or tissue inside your body that wasn't made inside your body. This means that the marker proteins on the outside of those cells may be different to the marker proteins on the outside of your cells and possibly uh, could be the marker proteins that your body produces antibodies to attack. So if the donated cell matches up with the antibodies that you produce, uh, the immune system is going to recognize that donated cell as an antigen, exactly the same as if it were a virus or a bacteria, and start attacking it and eventually reject it. Um, so this is a problem with organ transplants. When uh, organ transplants first started being used, uh, rejections were very common and we didn't really know why. And it wasn't until we understood more about these antibodies and antigens that we have uh, modern tissue typing. So what we do is we actually look at the donor, the uh, proteins that are in the donor tissue and try and match it up with the proteins that are in your own tissue so that hopefully you don't produce those antibodies that cause rejection. Another thing that we're doing now is using stem cell therapy where we can actually create tissue uh, from your own stem cells so therefore there's no risk of uh, rejection. Something that further decreases the likelihood of rejection is the administration of immunosuppressants. And this is drugs such as anti-lymphocyte globulin. And what they do is they turn off the immune response. So they stop the immune response from working by blocking it. Uh, and this means that the tissue that has been put into your body, that donated tissue, uh, gets a little bit of chance to take hold in your body before the immune system might start fighting it. Uh, so what this will do is, firstly, uh, it will stop that rejection from happening straight away. 
and also allow time for the blood cells that are inside that tissue uh, to be washed out, destroyed and replaced with your own blood cells, uh, thereby becoming a bit closer to uh, being considered or what the immune system considers to be your own cells. The problem with this is that if you take immunosuppressants, your immune system is suppressed. So you're no longer able to fight disease as efficiently or at all uh, if you were healthy or not taking these immunosuppressants. So this means that during this uh, transplant process while taking immunosuppressants, you have to stay in the hospital in a very clean environment to make sure that you don't or aren't exposed to any other antigens uh, because these could very easily take hold in your body and your body would not be able to fight them. In this video we've talked about immune response being the innate and acquired immune response, the battlefield inside your body where antibodies are produced to fight against the bad things in your body, foreign particles called antigens. And we've talked about how these antibodies bind with these antigens to deactivate them, creating an antigen antibody complex, which also marks it for being, uh, being destroyed later on. We've also talked about the risk when you're doing an organ transplant of the body recognizing these new transplanted cells and tissues as antigens as well and then attacking them causing rejection and how this is minimized through tissue typing, stem cells and the use of immunosuppressants uh, in the days immediately after an organ transplant. Thanks for watching guys. Peace out.